do ba do 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 sharky breath. He plays video games. Hello, and welcome back to Disco Elysium. Okay, so let's talk for just a, just a moment here. I've been uh recently I've been trying to be very careful about how I interface with the comments on this particular series because understandably a lot of people have a lot of very like the writing in this game is amazing so there's a lot of like favorite scenes that people have got that they would like me to see so but I'm but the thing is that in order to avoid like okay how do I put this I'm trying to do this as naturally as I can, you know? I'm trying to do things the way that I would in a vacuum, as best I can. But also, the comments have been very helpful with, like, teaching me about mechanics that I don't understand in this game and that sort of thing. Um, so if I seem to have been unresponsive on that front lately, I do apologize, but I'm just trying to do my best to... Because if I get information about an interaction, then it's impossible for me to, like approach that interaction without taking that information into account. I know I'm being vague here. I'm sorry, but like basically <laughs> if I if I haven't been responding properly to your uh, feedback in the comments then I apologize. That is why I'm just trying to um trying to keep this as natural as possible. But there is some stuff from the comments that I'm going to take into account today. And one of those is that apparently from this point onward it is possible to get yourself stuck with no skill points. Uh, on that front, I'm going to real quick. I've been avoiding putting them on because, like, I, I like the logic glasses, but it, it does make sense. I do have the thing that with Encyclopedia where I get a bunch of extra experience from that, so I am going to go ahead and put on the nerd glasses for just now. Uh, it was also advised that I put on the Dick Mullins hat, but, um, no. <laughs> Froggles. Very important. Um, but to that end, right, I've been fairly devil may care about like if I have a white check that I fail to just spend a point on it and try again but um, apparently that may be inadvisable in the future what was advised was that I save often but I am not going to save scum so here's what I'm going to do instead I, I want to figure out that this is my boss here um, but I was I was talking with a friend and uh, I was, something was mentioned in, in terms of like how that interaction goes I don't exactly know how it goes but it did occur to me that the reason I know who that guy is is because I called the radio back to my station, and I personally, the player, recognize who that is, whereas Harry does not. So what happens if I call the station now? Inside, you see a set of stairs. That's what I want to figure out. Radio microphone. This is precinct 57. How may I assist you? So maybe if I call the 41st and ask them about it, they might be able to let, give me access to that white check again without having to spend a uh, skill point on it? That's what I'm hoping anyway. So why don't we try this out? Right. Please hold. <laughs> what? It's been like three days, Alice. Why? <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry, but I don't have a better way of getting a hold of them. Then for come in. Uh, Firewalker. Over. <laughs> he hesitates. Okay. Well, first off, I can report that I found my badge. That's something anyway. I'm happy to report that I found my badge, Jules. I probably should have told him that earlier when I found it, but I forgot that that was a thing. Ten four, sir. Glad to hear that. I'll write down that there is no need to issue a new one to you then. Over. That does seem important. Thank you. Um, okay. So, how do we go about talking about my boss? The only other option I've got is this one, so why don't we try it? Ten four, sir. Sorry, but I'm under orders to give a negative to request for personal information. Over. You mean you can't tell me anything about me? But I'm me! Understood. Well, let's go ahead and be... Let's go ahead and complain about it, because my boss isn't there to, um... I mean, the other guys are there to make fun of me, sure, but I, I want information about my boss. Let's just try and be whiny and see if anyone speaks up. Stand for. Orders as your orders. Anything else? Over. So, it's not possible to bring it up at the moment. Okay, okay, well, you know, it was worth a shot, I guess. Cool, bye. Roger that. Ten, ten, over and out. With those words, the cabin becomes silent again, the radio microphone resting on its hook. At least I didn't have to trouble Alice, Alice again. All right, well, that didn't work. That didn't work. Great. Well, I guess that's fine. All right, well then, I guess we're back to plan A on that particular front. I don't know how important it is that I figure out that that's my boss, but it seems pretty important, doesn't it? So let's see here. What can I do in terms of esprit de corps? I'm pretty sure that my jacket gives me some, right? 
But it's only jackets that give me any, I'm pretty sure. It's all the things with the badges on them. The patches, rather, you know? The RCM patches. In any case, give me a second to go through my stuff and make sure that there isn't anything that I'm missing. And, as I suspected, there is not. So, let me just get out my ledger. And let's go ahead and make sure that talking to my boss does no, does no good at all at the moment. Hello. Hello. Again? I can't believe this shit. He shakes his head, looking like he really has having trouble believing this shit. As usual. Okay. There's something strange about this guy. I still don't have <laughs> anything I can do there. Um... Kim will stay out of it. I already asked him about it. Let, let me just let me just check in with you. Hello. Yes. What is it? Oh, hey. She looks at you. Cool. Um, we got some new options. But here's the thing. Did you hear that? Did you hear me sing? Did you like it? They weren't here when I sang. I'm pretty sure. But I guess I can ask them about it. That that was pretty good, Harry. Wasn't it, Jean? She pokes her companion with an elbow. Um, continue. Ah, huh, that was. Yeah. That was absolute shit, if you want my opinion. Drunken shit. Haven't wanted anything to end this badly since I had cluster headaches. He stares at you. Listen, I wasn't even drunk. I haven't had a drink in most of a week, which for me I think is pretty good. So screw you. Continue. Horrible. Truly horrible. He continues. I beg of you, don't ever subject anyone to this torture again. I mean, seriously, you need to... He's still going. Jean, he's not right. Don't make it worse and... And I, I really liked it. She quietly interjects, giving you a compassionate side glance. Well, thank you for that. Um, I'm not calling you the name that's written, cause I, but I can't remember what your actual name is, so continue. She actually did. She actually did. Well, great. Um, are you with him? Point to the man with the sunglasses. Of course I'm with him. She seems startled by Why her own tone. Ask? He's an asshole. He seems like a cool guy. You look cute together. Nothing, just wondering. Uh, he seems like a cool guy. I mean, he doesn't, but you know. Well, he's not. He's a sack of shit belly kept together by crazy glue. But at least he tries, unlike you. The man interjects, his voice is stern. I'm, listen, I'm trying so hard lately. You have no idea, man with sunglasses. But, well, you've just been sitting in here while I've been running around trying to solve cases, so I guess how would you know? Continue. Please, let's not turn this into another exchange, okay? She looks at you, then him, then you again. Okay. Okay, fine. Goodbye. Does that give me an opportunity? Again? To... <laughs> I can't believe this shit. Okay. Okay. We got another chance. She's with him. Plus one. All right. There's something strange about this guy. Figure it out. More than 50%. It's better than last time. I'd rather not spend a skill point. Come on. You know <laughs> what it is. It's like the two of you know each other. Just ask him. Even with a success... I still don't know. Tell me the truth. Do you know me from somewhere? Fine. If this is the way we got to do it, then let's do it this way. Oh, I definitely know you from somewhere. I can't imagine where. Continue. Another life. From where? From another life? Yes. From another life. A different life. Maybe the life of a police officer belonging to the ranks of the... He pauses. Where are you going with this? To what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality? <laughs> 41st, 57th, 69. 99,999,999.9th. Never mind, this is stupid. Do we play it straight? I feel like we play it straight, right? I just want, I just want to sort this out in my brain. I mean, admittedly, I probably already made the role in there. I mean, I made, I already made the role, and so probably all these options will get me to the place I'm looking to go. But I feel like we play it straight, right? We're already in the bad books enough as it is, right? 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 Maybe? I don't know. It's boring. It's boring, but whatever. I'm boring right now. Okay, okay. That's plausible. That's entirely plausible. Now we're really getting somewhere. The man sounds genuinely excited. He gives you a long, meaningful look and adds... Somewhere good. Let's talk more about that hypothetical Station 41 you mentioned. Okay, so that... Cool, great. Well, that that was progress. That's progress, right? That seems good. Sure, let's talk about it. Okay. That's not what you said at all. Oh, the hypothetic, hypothetical 4-1. Yeah, let's fantasize about that. He blinks aggressively. I'm not busy. You're not busy. Let's just play around. So what would our relationship be in this alternate universe? Do you have a crime to solve? Who else is in our imaginary police station? I can't imagine it anymore. Okay, so relationship. Let's start there. Let's be crazy. Let's say you and I are partners. How's that for a thought experiment? Partners, really? Like partners in crime or 
You seem like a cool guy. I'd love to have you as my partner. You seem like a bit of a drag. No offense, but I could do better. Kim's cooler than you. <laughs> oh, man. I am trying to get in the good books with this guy, but Kim is cooler than you. I'm sure he's fucking flattered, but Kim is not part of his thought experiment. In this one, we are partners. Are you genuinely my partner? Is he genuinely my partner? Is that the thing? He's not my boss. He's my partner. I, I was wrong the entire time. Okay, cool. Continue. The lieutenant is silent. Uh-huh. Well, fair enough. Sure. You seem like a cool guy. I'd love to have you as my partner. Would you now, or would I be cramping your style? Never mind. Partner. The man bites his lip and waves his hand. Okay, okay, so he is my partner. And while I was in Bender Zone, I treated him very poorly, I see. Okay, actually, you would probably cramp my style. No, you wouldn't cramp my style at all. Actually, I should have called you my partner. I shouldn't have called you my partner. Kim's my partner. He's going to know. <laughs> Kim doesn't want to be involved in this, but that would be funny to say. <laughs> I'm not your partner. This, this union is temporary. He says quickly, okay, fine. We'll be that way, Kim. That's not hurtful at all. A little premonition for you, Lieutenant. Sooner or later, probably sooner, your new friend tells you he doesn't need you. He will then suggest you should fuck off. Ah. Hmm. So that's the thing that I did before the, the, in the before all this, then, as well, huh? Racist lorry driver knows about that particular tendency as well. Continue. When that happens, I suggest you take his advice. He adds bitterly. Continue. The lieutenant merely bows his head in response. Okay. So he's my partner. Turns out he's my partner. Good to know. Um, do you have a crime to solve? Were you supposed to be working with me on this particular crime? In which case, uh, sorry? Oh, no, no, no. You see, I enjoy watching other better cops solve crimes. And let me tell you, it's been quite a privilege seeing you work. Okay, sarcasm zone, sure, continue. This isn't helping. She says, shaking her head and looking at the man with sunglasses disapprovingly. So who else is in our imaginary police station? You're not going to believe this, but police officers. The man pauses for dramatic effect. You don't say. Would it be the guys who were laughing at me on the radio earlier? Because, I mean, it seems likely, doesn't it? Continue. Yes, sir. Solving crimes, looking at bad guys, and, and get this, and not getting that drink on at 2 o'clock. I mean, yeah, fair. But, like, listen, I, seriously, most of a week, I feel like I'm doing pretty well. Continue. Just some regular boring motherfuckers in suits and uniforms. Nothing spectacularly extravagant like you, the far-out son of Lung. Far-out son of Lung? How many different names did I come up with for myself? Who is the far-out son of Lung? Oh, it's you, you eccentric genius. He winks at you I sarcastically. Mean, with your unorthodox approach to police work, it has to be you. Want to tell me more about him or her? <laughs> Please? Not even a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I figured. Continue. It's an urban myth about an officer who is so far undercover he can't remember who he is. As I said, just an urban myth. You are not the son of Lang. The lieutenant says quietly. Well, thank you, Kim. Appreciate you getting my back on this one anyway. Okay. Yes. You get the joke. Leave it at that. That does seem to be the choice that makes sense. Sure. Okay. Cool. Well, I guess we've gone through all our options, so I can't imagine it anymore. <sighs> Neither can I, partner. Neither can I. His gray eyes suddenly flash above the glass frames. They feel sad. <sighs> so what's he doing here? He's my partner. Why is he undercover? What? Okay, okay, okay. So, I specifically said he was cramping my style and told him to fuck off. So, that's why he wasn't here initially. He's here now. Maybe he was forced to come here by our mutual boss, whoever that is. I assumed it was you, but just because, you know, you seem to be most critical of me, which seemed to make sense. But now that I know you're my partner, that makes even more sense. Um, but why did the disguise? I don't... Does it does it change anything in the Cool Shades option if I know who he is, roughly? Yes, it's a hobby of mine. He looks at you inquisitively. As if waiting for some kind of reaction or response. Something to click. It's not happening, though. 
Who is this guy? So even after our conversation, I still don't know who he is. Wow. I just have a big blank spot in my brain where my partner is supposed to be. Huh. Okay, well, see you around then. Great. Bink, something on my brain. What's okay. It? The man with the sunglasses and his hypothetical Station 41. Weird, right? I know, super weird. I guess it was kind of weird, yes. No, this whole interaction was perfectly normal. Frankly, I'm way past caring or wondering, this card thought. No, let's, let's, yeah, super weird. It was super weird, right? Super weird. There's something missing here. Yeah. Something you can't put our finger on. You know what? Just ask him. I know it sounds crazy, and you'll probably get laughed at, but still. I was just thinking the same thing. I should just ask him if we're from the same station. It's impossible. I don't want to waste my time. No, listen, listen, just, just go with it. Yes, just cross it off the list. It's probably not true, though. What is going on with my brain? I mean, I know, but why is this particular blind spot so insistent on being blind? Continue. I mean, end. Anyway, hi. Again? I can't believe this shit. Right, right. Look, I just have to ask, are we from the same police, police station? Please, please. I'm going to say no, just to see what you'll say to that. What'd you say? I have two options. One is okay. One is yeah, probably not. I don't remember you from anywhere. So I guess I'm going with okay. Okay? Yeah, okay. Jean, he said okay. Give it a rest. Continue. You're the one who said no, dummy. Okay, I was clearly wrong. He is a firefighter, male nurse. Animal control agent. Something of that kind. Not a cop. Go on with your cop work. Don't let me stop you again. Oh, oh man. Okay, fine. We're just going to be this way about this, are we? We're just going to be this way. Fine. All right. Bye. Do you have anything new to say now that I theoretically know that he's my yes. partner but insist not? Look. What is it? Look, something is really bugging me. Are we or are we not from the same police station? Please give me a straight answer. The other guy won't. God damn it. You'll leave her alone. Man Keep your weird bullshit to yourself and be professional for once, for fuck's sake. The man with sunglasses snaps at you, so I guess this isn't happening then. Fine, continue. Can I actually help you with something? She looks at you apologetically. Continue. Yes, of course. Preposterous. I mean, you would remember if they were, right? Who forgets their squad mates? That's not possible. That doesn't seem possible, except for the fact that I forgot everything about my life several days ago. Fine, be that way, Esprit de Corps. You just be that way. Okay, bye. Oh, that's frustrating. That is. That right there is frustrating, but what can I do about it? I ask you. Okay, so here's the thing. What I said I was going to do once I went through that interaction was go up and talk to the victim. And that does seem to be important, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. If I do that, number one, I'm pursuing the main plot to the exception of all else, which I'm sure Kim is fine with, aside, but the thing is, I'm not fine with that. I've got a bunch of stuff on the side that I have not been dealing with, and that is starting to bother me. And here's the thing. The day is getting, well, no, it's what, like 3 o'clock? 4 o'clock? Coming up on 4 o'clock. If I go much further, it's going to be nighttime again, and that's the reason I didn't investigate the, the church last time. So I think I want to take a quick detour and go... Swing by the church. Also, I might drive and buy some pants from Kuno. I'm sure Kim will be fine with it. Kim's fine with everything. Aren't you, Kim? Of course he is. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. There she is. That's the person I need to talk to. But that conversation is going to be rough, I would imagine. Because <sighs> I set it up to be rough at the very first episode of this game. Right, anyway. Speed train Kuno is leaving the station, so I better try and catch him before he goes. Fuck, does Kuno care? He doesn't care. It's true. Okay, so I don't have the empathy to do the thing. Uh, let's see here. Where do I... How do I... How do I buy the pants from you, Kuno? Kuno, how do I buy pants from you? Um... Let's just go through some options and see if there's an option to buy pants from him. The fuck about it? Uh... More on this later. You're testing Kuno. Get lost, f Uh-huh, what you... What, right, right, whatever you say. Um, I have more questions about the crime scene. Yeah. The kingdom of Kuno? The fuck do you want with it? I might have questions later. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Indeed he doesn't. Um, let's talk about the shack. The fuck do you want with it? I've heard enough Good of this. Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. I just want to buy some pants. Uh, okay, well, um, hmm. Hmm. 
Em- three empathy is as high as it gets for me, right? I'm pretty sure that that is the case. I guess I could nick another shot at it. It's the worst that can happen is it just tells me f- I failed again. So sure, let's take another shot at it. What's going on? Mm-hmm. He's an ungovernable youth on your crime scene, thrown around incendiary language, trying to push your buttons. Wait a second. Why is it acting like I haven't seen this before? Didn't I try this before? Did I not try this before? Continue. Like you don't have enough on your plate. You feel a sudden surge of self-pity coming on. Wait a second. Why are we doing this again? Can you turn on the Kuno for a moment? Boundary pushing this thing isn't told for it to grab it. I don't know what to do anymore. I'm just a busted old piece of meat. This case is all I have and you're not helping. Want to help the RC and bust a murderer? I guess I can try another option, but I feel like the best that's going to happen is going to lose some more freaking volition. Why are we doing this again? Usually when I fail a white check again, it just is like, nah, nah, it's fine. You just failed again. Don't worry about it. But apparently not. Huh? Is there a better option? Probably not. But let's try something else, I guess. How about self-pity? We could do self-pity. That's definitely going to hurt my volition. But my volition's maxed out at the moment. And I get morale from various things. It's probably fine. Sure. I'm just a busted old piece of meat. Take the pain, fucko. Take the bad. The child is not grinning. It looks more like a wolf, baring its teeth. Mm, Fair enough. Smelling weakness. She loves it. I have no doubt that she does. Continue. You hear that, see? Porco wants to talk about how he can't hack this shit. Porco wants to move in with Kuna. Yeah, I mean, that's one conclusion you could draw from that particular statement. Sure, continue. Don't let him move in with us, Kuno. Wait, you two live together? Fair enough. Continue. You have no idea what to say now. You're just going to have to try to change the subject. There's no more to talk about, so let's see if I take volition damage for leaving. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Great, I'm glad to hear it. Thank you, Kuno. I guess I will not be buying pants from you this day. You're not much of a salesman, you come down to it. But then I guess that's not too surprising. Kuno, Kuno's plate is filled with Kuno, and that is just fine, I guess. Okay, all right. So, so, church, church. Let's go to the church. All right, we're at the church. I do have a lot of money, but I can spend that money anytime, so it's fine. It's just fine. What is the, the door really looks open, doesn't it? But it's not. I have the key. I can get in. All right, but before I do, I would like to have one more conversation with a cell, which is not this way, is it? It's around back, isn't it? But I can't fast travel to a cell, so I guess that's fine. Is it this way? Was it this way? I feel like it was, but I feel like a lot of things, and I'm not usually right. Yeah, this is just high reads, heavy reads. Wait, isn't this the place where I left the empty trap, though? We can take care of that while I'm here. I'm just getting distracted all over the place. I'm sure it's not a problem. Kim is fine with it. Aren't you, Kim? Great. Glad to hear it. (sighs) Okay, the the trap is right over there. That should be the one that was empty. That was the last one I checked last time, wasn't it? Let's have a look. The reeds dance slowly around the empty trap. The trap's netting trembles. No insect sounds or movement anywhere. Right, right, right. Wait a second. Did I, So I have the locusts in my inventory? Did I ever look at them? Let's have a look. Locusts, locusts. Did I ever? Items. That's the filament, right? Figurine. Interact. Where are the locusts? They're just sort of on my person? Am I just carrying them around in my coat? Maybe. Maybe. Seems as likely as anything else. No. No. It's not in the fuel canister. In the box! The box of locusts! Now I remember. Now I remember. There it is. Okay, cool. Great. I did look at that. Okay, anyway, locusts in the- The slowly around the empty trap. Locusts in the trap! The locusts, dazed from being transported, slowly begin to acclimate to their new surroundings. Continue. They're not really going to get the chance to get comfortable here. I suppose that's true. That's not the point. Continue. Good. Now that's done. When can we get to our impending apocalypse of a murder investigation? We've been doing so much work on it today, Kim. We've been so good about it. We can take a break every now and again, right? No? No? Don't answer that. It was a rhetorical question. He stops you. Okay, leave. Fine, fine. Well, what do I need to do next on that particular front? You've restocked the trap. Now report to Lena and the Whirling. Okay, fine. Can do. But not right now. Right now, I need to go talk to a cell. Ah, what's this? Hmm? The boardwalk rises to your south. It casts its long shadow over you. Does it? I don't see a shadow. This right here? Maybe. That could be what it's referring to. 
I don't see the shadow in question, which surprises me. Usually those per those orbs that circle around my head are pretty accurate in their findings. Um, have I gone the wrong... I have gone the wrong direction. This, this is a dead end. Lovely. Everyone loves dead ends, particularly me. Let's go this way. I was hoping that by zooming out a little bit, I'd be able to see where I was going a little bit better. And it probably would work. Would it work better if I still had White Morning, huh? But I don't, and that's fine. My brain works in a special way, and that's just the way it is. Once things are out, they're gone forever. Can't do nothing about it. And I've only got room for, what, 12? 12, 12 things in my brain, and that's it. It's gonna have to be good enough. This is the way to a cell. This way. Underneath here, and around the corner, speaking to children. That's what we're doing right now. It's gonna be great. There she is. Hello, Acel. How are you? Let me zoom in a little bit. Hi. Oh, right, I have to talk to you from over here. I forgot. Hello again. Hello. The girl looks up at a, you for a moment before turning back to her work. So here's the empathy check. I sure don't have much of a chance of succeeding, but it sure is a check I can retry. Um, hmm. Gave her a hat. I cast a hedral red die. Okay, so there's something... There's another thing from the comments. <laughs> That, so it turns out that I have a strong tendency to go just begin down the path of a thought and then abandon it as soon as I begin to get abrasive in game. And usually I'm okay with that particular course of action, but I'm really curious about static mic. So I'm wondering, contact mic, excuse me, about contact mic. So I'm really wondering if I can re-pursue that. So I'm going to just try it once, okay? Bear with me. Sure. Contact mic. Right. Role model. Um. An entire litany spews forth. Yes. Be more like Contact Mike, yes. Man, you are one weird cop. This isn't about me. This is about your lack of respect for one of the boxing's greats. And for yourself. Let's try that. What is it with you and this Mike guy? She pauses. The question is rhetorical. Is it, though? Continue. Okay. If it floats your boat, I'll be more like Contact Mike and less like me. Yes, that does indeed float my boat. Self-respect is not meant to float any boats but your own. <laughs> That one. I'll keep that in mind for future use. Cool, thank you for that. All right, I have some non-mic -mic questions for okay. you. Great. Um, hey, plus two, more like contact mic now. Hey, it worked out. Look at that, look at me, I'm, I'm doing a thing. All right, the tape recorder lies on the ice like a distorted toy, pick it up. Let's try it. This is about as good a chance as I'm gonna get. Come on, you can do it. The device yeah. is still warm from her touch and heavy as a brick from the batteries inside. The company logo, Omicron, adorns its yellow plastic cover. Inside, the tape is rolling. The girl looks at the device in your hands. Indeed. Uh, as a clarification, I did actually not know that pursuing contact Mike would make this easier. That's, that's news to me. Basically, someone in the comments was just like, oh, come on, <laughs> you were so close. And it turns out, yes, I was. Anyway, I'm sorry you have to sit here on the ice feeling miserable. At your age, or at any age, in this weather, waiting for it to get dark. Or just don't do anything. No, let's have some empathy. I made the check. This doesn't happen often. She looks you in the eye, her pupils wide, surrounded by a ridiculous amount of makeup. Are they? Kind of didn't look that way from your portrait, but okay, fair enough. The people who built this world intended it to be better for you, but they failed. It is easier to live in their failure with this by your side. Tap on the tape recorder. Or don't say anything. Why, why would I? Why would I not? The wind howls. She remains silent. I guess it would be a lot to take in. I just chided you for not being more like Contact Mike, and now suddenly I'm doing this. Continue. It's real. Tell her. It is not a childish fantasy. It can be a real weapon against what's coming for you now. <laughs> wow, that's a way to word it. Or don't. Not tell her. What is? Her shoulders shake a little. The dark. Nothing, if you've got this. Don't be scared. I'm once again reminded of how Contact Mike rose from the slums of St. Batiste to the top of the boxing world, overcoming adversity and serious brain trauma. Nothing is coming. Nothing he wouldn't walk, knock out in three rounds. The real fight is for the right attitude. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, let's see here. <laughs> so we have... Just try and scare her straight up. Deflect. Which will just scare her also, I would imagine. Or, 
go back to acting like a weirdo and hope that that diffuses the situation. I'm kind of actually leaning towards that. Just be a weirdo. There was some good advice in there. Just bracketed in weirdo. It's fine. Weirdo front and back. Here we go. I can't believe this turned into another mic thing. Fine. Okay, I'll stick to it. She takes I'll the device. I'll knock it out in three rounds. <laughs> she takes the device from you and places it in her lap. I'm, I feel okay about this result. Continue. So thanks, I guess, for the psych session. Maybe I can return it. What's been eating you, officer? Interesting. After a moment of silence, she, she, silence, she speaks again. Uh, you said eating me. There's nothing eating me, isn't there? <laughs> Come on, I can tell. But, okay. Be a boy boyadero about it if you want to. She shakes her head slowly. I guess there is something that's been making my life hell. Exactly, I don't want to talk about it. No, let's proceed, proceed. What is it? She listens intently. I think it's the plight of the working class. No, probably not. Everyone's just mooching off the entrepreneurial class, shackling the doers. No, no, it's not it. I think it's all these foreign people taking our jobs. No, people just keep putting their selfish interests ahead of the greater good. Okay, all right. I was kind of hoping we'd address the actual issues that are eating me up, but... Okay, so, communist option. Uh, uh, would this, hmm. Hmm, okay, so this, I, I believe, I believe if we're going to classify these answers, we have the communist option, we have the fascist option, we have the racist option, and we have the mod, the, what do they call it? Why can I never remember this word? The middle, it's a centrist option, right? Putting their selfish interests ahead of the greater good. Hmm. I was really hoping we would actually address, you know, the issues that are... The personal issues I've got. I mean, these are... These are not not issues. They're not non-issues, sure. I just was hoping we were going to take it somewhat seriously. But then again, I did do the contact mic option at the end, didn't I? So I guess... I guess there's that. I'm going to go with the working class, but I'm not happy about it. Oh, really? The golem of capital runs rampant, smashing creator and slave alike. I fear the process is irreversible. I mean, that is... I, I do have concerns on that front, but like... I don't think this is something she's going to be able to help with? Question mark? Wow. Social justice really matters that much to you. That's commendable. It really had you shaken up there. Are you sure that's it, though? I'm not. I haven't seen much of this world, but from what I've seen, social justice is an adolescent term. Sounds almost liberal. What's got me shaken up is the people's struggle, and it's got me shaken up bad. No, that's probably not it, is it? Yeah, pretty sure. Now, I had some questions about something else entirely. <laughs> so we can lean real hard into the communist thing. Or we can try and choose something else. I'm guessing it's just going to send me back to the list of four objects that I chose from earlier. But let's at least try it. No, it sounds like you just got chick issues. <laughs> I mean, you're not entirely wrong. Now that you mentioned that I found these letters I'd thrown in the trash, they might have something to do with it. You could be right, but I don't know for certain. Go for it, man. How? I mean, I've got so much, so much morale damage I could take. Go for it. Okay. Why'd you think that? First, they had just the faintest scent of chewing gum on them. I could still smell it under the shit. They were written in a woman's hand. And oh boy, did reading them make me feel, make me not feel good. To hell with this. Questions, I had them. And you have answers. <sighs> Both of these are true. This is more important. This one starts with first, which suggests I can say this and then that. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. Let's see if it works. Wow, man. That's pretty symbolic. Don't you think? She raises her eyebrow. Yes, I found that to be very symbolic, too. No. Why? Um, yes. Yes. Okay. What else? Uh, they were written in a woman's hand, and oh boy, did be reading them not make me feel not good. Make, make me not make me not feel good. Why can I not read the words in this sentence in the correct order? I don't know. Carry on. There you have it, then. Chick trouble. Not political, after all. Who was she? One option. I don't remember. Really? You seem to be pretty upset about this, Chica. Are you sure you don't remember anything about her? She appears to believe. She appears to believe you. 
Um, I remember her scent, and that's all. Yep, next to nothing. And it is absolutely a self-defense mechanism, because whenever I try to remember stuff about her, I feel like dying. I remember her scent, and that's all. Wow, man. That's some pretty strange shit. Are you sure the letters were for you? She rubs her side for, sides for warmth. Yeah, I'm sure. Why would I have reacted so strongly otherwise? Come to think of it, the whore could have written them to her lover. <sighs> we're not choosing that one, thank you. Uh, this one. How come you don't remember, though? Is it like some selective memory thing? Wait, what do you mean by selective memory? I think it's more about me getting so unbelievably drunk I completely erased all memory of this world. You might have a point there, selective memory. What do you mean by selective memory? Cont it's a weight option. Let's do it. Man, when I get hurt, I just want to forget that shit, you know? That kind of selective memory. Joyce thought it was me getting drunk. And Joyce knows a lot about things. But I... I do feel like it's... I feel like selective memory probably gets closer to the heart of it, right? My brain, like, it's, the game started with my reptile brain trying to convince me to never wake up because it was the only way to protect me from the world. My brain is trying to stop me from remembering. So I think the selective memory thing is right. Yeah. Or it might just be some psych bullshit, you know? Koenigstein wank. What is this Koenigstein wank? All right, I had some other questions for you. No, no, no. T tell me about the wank. You know... The psych thing they've got going on there. Rich people like it. People in Königstein are mostly rich. Is that so? Thanks for the bu bullshit psych thing, then. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure this made things any better. All right, I had some questions for you. Well, no, we may as well say thanks, at least. You're welcome. Might be for the best to keep that shit forgotten, though. Just my opinion. If it itches, don't scratch. Huh, that's sure some advice. She thinks for a second, stretching her jaw. Hmm. Continue. Yes, but it itches really, really bad. I mean, there is that pain threshold. You definitely have a point. Okay. Well, I guess that's it for now. Thank you, Isel. All oh, right. Well, that was a good conversation. I guess let's go make good on my agreement. Let's go check out the church. Presumably there are people in there, right? They said there were people in there. They said there was a shadow crawling on the wall in there. But, well, like I say, best to go in during the daylight hours then, right? Probably. Probably. Let's at least have a look. Hello. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock, carelessly drilled into the wood. I'm pretty sure I've heard that one before, but I figured may as well let him speak for, you know, setting up the scene. Open the padlock with the key, please. The lock turns easily. You hear a click as the shackle pops open. All right, continue. Feels like electricity and a very small piece of nothingness. Well, that's promising. Just barely succeeded at that one too, huh? Continue. Let's go. The lieutenant nods at you. Pull on the doors. As you do, you hear the echo of the Doom commercial area. It's black holes and dusty machines. Then the feeling passes. That doesn't feel like an Inland Empire thing. That feels like a Shivers thing. Huh. Maybe I don't understand Inland Empire as well as I think I do. But then again, my Inland Empire is terrible, so that wouldn't be too surprising. Continue. A great whoosh of air rushes into the dark innards of the church, as though rushing to fill a great vacuum. Why would that be the case? Did they have a fire going in there? Continue. In the heart of the city. Huh. Continue. Ooh. This is sure a place. Yeah, I'd imagine I would have some thoughts about this as soon as I stepped into it. Sure, let's let's have thoughts. A strange stillness fills you as you look ahead. You should walk here, not run. Okay, I can do that. I can absolutely do that. What's this? Have a look. More of the forked lightning pattern you saw outside. Thoughts? Bark beetles? No, it looks intentional. Some long-forgotten style. All right. What do we have over here? Do I need my flashlight out? That might be a good idea, actually. This grotesque wooden figure looks half-finished. Half 
this figure was added later. It's not part of the original church. I can't really even see it. Let's let's get that let's get that flashlight out. I wonder if my brain's gonna be mad at me for getting the flashlight out. Um, here. Oh, the pillar's been carved into it. I see. Huh. Interesting. Let's go back into the first dark corner I went into. Make sure there's not anything I missed over there. No, just some chairs. That's fine. Okay. And my brain hasn't shouted at me about the flashlight, so I think we're okay on that front. What's this? Let me have a look. The blackboard is filled with complex equations. They look recent. Okay. Something to do with radio's frequencies. Is this where I can get the password for the cube I've been carrying around for all week? Maybe. Maybe. What's this? The bowl is filled with water. A live wire runs, runs directly into it. Didn't they mention something about this? The wire in the water? Could these wires work as a contact microphones? They could, I suppose. Huh. They're trying to record sounds under the ground here, or vibrations through the ground here? Something like that? What's this? The silence in this part of the church. It's almost palpable. All the shifting matter and shuffling of living things is gone. Nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Really? Continue? Maybe if you were to stand in just the right spot, even your footsteps would be completely silent. Right in the center of the dishes. Wait, I think I still hear something. What's that? And then it's gone. Almost all of it, but for the faintest of hums. Indeed it is. Continue. You can hardly hear your own breathing. Yell as loud as you can. Stomp your feet and clap your hands. Let's start by yelling. Your voice is barely audible. Not a howl, but the softest of whimpers. Stomp your feet. Clamp your hands. This is, is this actually a silence zone? Have they set up some sort of device that cancels out sound directly here? You produce a few muffled thumps, after which the silence feels even more total. Somehow. Turn to Kim. What's happening? The lieutenant points to his ears and shakes his head. Then he leans closer. Continue. Can you hear anything? Almost nothing, and it's beginning to worry me. Not really, but it's extraordinary. I've never experienced anything like this. Can't hear shit! <laughs> are we worried? Are we exhilarated? Or are we just gonna... Shrug it off? Hmm... I'm worried. The church just has strange acoustics, some engineering trick. I don't think that's it, Kim. Continue. Maybe the church was designed this way to prevent boisterous activity. Maybe. Singing and dancing on its premises. Maybe they wanted to discourage singing and dancing? Hey, what if it's something paranatural? It's probably nothing, just our imagination. Whatever it is, it's definitely real. Something odd is happening around us. Well, this is a conceptualization check. Can do I get other options if I say it? Who knows? Let's try it. Hmm. Could be. Continue. He doesn't seem entirely convinced, though. He doesn't, does he? Can I try another option? I don't... I, I always feel weird about clicking back through a conversation I just had to try another option. It doesn't feel natural, but, like... I would like to. The lieutenant... Can you hear anything? Uh, the church just had... Maybe the church was designed this way to prevent boisterous activity. This one. This is the one... and dancing. This is the one that on I wanted premises. to do before the conceptualization check happened. Something is ha something odd is happening around us. The lieutenant doesn't reply, but you can sense him tense up next to you. Look up into the bell tower. The orderly rows of ceiling panels become barely visible, then disappear completely in the darkness of the tower overhead. Perception check. A red one. I don't think I will get the chance to try it again if I back out with this option. I suspect it's something that's there right now and won't be later. 72% isn't bad. I could do better, but it's... Let's just try it. I failed. Just darkness without end. It makes your head spin. What's the darkness like? Try to make out something, anything. Blink. What's the darkness like? Filled with vague shapes of woodwork. The sense of a great height. 
try to make out something. There's nothing. You're dizzy and disoriented as you see dark and more dark rising. Am I about to pass out? Continue. Officer, what are you looking at? He follows your gaze, attempting to see whatever it is that you're seeing. Blink. Huh? Huh? You see something hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. The shadow on the wall. It's up there in the rafters. Continue. Maybe it's possible to talk to it. Maybe. And... Yeah, um, listen. That's fascinating. Can I have a look around before I speak to this man? Or do we have to do it right now? I wonder. Um... What if I walk away? What if I just... What if I just step back for a second? Give me a second. I'm just checking the place out. Talk to anybody else I've talked to. They'll tell you it's what I do. What's this? Cold wind blows in from the blo broken gallery. It makes your skin crawl. What's this? Two decks of reel-to-reel -reel tape spinning on empty. All right. All right. What's this? A portable Harman Wauschi tape recorder. Oh. It's possible it's recording something? That is possible. It's also possible that if I hadn't bought back my tape player, I could have played my tape here, but a little late for that. What's this? Someone's siphoning electrical current from outside into this antenna. The antenna, Ream Esker AR-1, is buzzing with energy. Okay. What's this? A machine stands in the corner, watched over by the figures on the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. Continue. Another radio computer. And this that time it's already turned on. Says the lieutenant, stepping closer. He seems cautious around the machine. Fair. Continue. We should leave. I doubt this place bears any connection to the case. Yes, but this machine looks just like the one in the Doom commercial area. Wait, let me just investigate it. Step behind the computer. You're right, let's get out of here. No, I mean, there's a guy hanging from the ceiling. <sighs> Start with this. It's also quite similar to the one we have down at the station. Must be the same model. Really? He, inspect the machine. he inspects the machine's framework, careful not to touch anything. Continue. The one you saw earlier was the Ream Civic. This is the Ream Prefect, a model number RC7024, equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream-compatible entering printer. I know a lot more about this sort of thing than I would expect. Continue. The Ream Prefect is the governmental version of the commonly used Ream Civic model. Although mostly based on the same technology, the Ream Prefect is equipped with better noise attenuation circuits. Governmental version? A governmental computer? Radio computer? Whatever? What's that doing here? Let me just investigate it real quick. You see fluorescent play and print buttons on the keyboard. A hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. Right, continue. The lieutenant says nothing. You see the machine's glowing frame reflected back from his diamond-shaped glasses. Diamond-shaped? You're free to proceed. That was struck me as circular. Are they diamond-shaped? Look inside the compartment. Behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments, smoldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side says, in black marker, log, February to March. Right, continue. Another filament memory. Press play to talk with the repeater. Not right now, actually. Leave. For now. Leave. What's the one I've got? What does that one say? Interact. No, this one. This one here. Protection schedule. Filament memory. Right. And there's another one that's hidden inside the ice cream maker, but I can't get it open because I don't have an appropriate tool for the job. Let's go over here and look at these shoes and this money. Give me the money. Thank you. What are these shoes? Mesk bangers, red brogues. Plus one empathy. Oh, wow. That's actually really helpful. Give me those. Let me have a look. Let me have a look at those shoes. These dapper snakeskin shoes have an almost invisible white-on-white -white flower motives, mo mo no motive, sewn on the tongue. The toe caps are still dusty from lying in the church. Plus one empathy in someone else's shoes, literally. I guess that's true. Huh. As compared to plus one composure, minus one sapphire fair. Those... My composure isn't great either. <laughs> But it's certainly better than my empathy. Why don't we get those on? Try and keep those on whenever talking to people. That seems useful. Okay. All right. Good. What's this over here? No, I want to look at this. I want to look at this over here. Are you not going to... Whoa! Don't run! I specifically was told not to run. 
A spider has spun its web around this wood carved pillar. Okay, good to know. Guy's still there. Guy's still just watching. Cool, I guess. A cracked pane of glass. Colorful. No doubt. No doubt. Let me just... Let me just step underneath real quick. Don't mind me, just checking the place out, possibly looting things. Frost has drawn flowers on the glass, obscuring the view. Uh-huh. I couldn't see it from around the corner anyway. Unsurprisingly, a figure drawn in frost on the window, depicting a deer. So someone's been sketching in the frost? Maybe this guy? Presumably this guy. What's this? Mesk Banger's silk scarf. Huh. Are you the Mesk Banger? Am I just taking your stuff? Is it okay that I take your stuff? I'm taking your stuff. We'll talk about it in a minute. I'm getting off on the right foot with this guy. This huge red scarf is still dusty from lying in the church. A subtle red on red embroidery embellishes it with cocky roosters and mesk floral mo motives. Plus one pain threshold. Bangers don't cry. All right. All right. Well. Hello there. Are these your shoes I'm wearing? Can we talk about it? I wonder. Is that a man? Looks more like part of the carpentry of the building came alive and is now studying you intently. It does look like a statue almost in this picture here, but it's definitely moving. Continue. The crab man. Presumably, yes, the crab man. Hey, who's there? This is the police. Show yourself. Say nothing. Be quiet for now. Um, are you the crab man? I'm not sure that Kim even knows that guy's up there. He asked me what I was looking at, and I didn't tell him. But presumably, the um, are you the crab man is the reaction speed check option. So let's ask if he's the crab man. I would be sort of inclined to be quiet if Kim had any idea what was going on, but I don't think he does, so... The man leaned forward a little, fixing you with a steady, unreadable gaze, then speaks. Tiago. I didn't even notice that it has a name written out front. Tiago. Continue. Habitual alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, Holmes. But don't worry. Everything's gonna be alright. You come to the right place. Have I now, Tiago? Continue. That accent is Villa Lobos, a peninsula in Mesk and a district in general. There's a sizable contingent of Villa Lobos speaking Mesks in Rivershaw. Mesks. Ah, so these are in fact your shoes and your scarf that I have collected and am partially wearing. I see. The right place for what? What are you doing here? The right place for what? Here you can receive the mother's love. And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of that bottle. Uh, okay. I've been clean for almost a week, but fair enough, I guess. Continue. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? Is... How can you tell from down here, Kim? The lieutenant whispers at you, to you quietly, rather. Continue. Hey, and what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off it already. Sheesh. I mean, it's true. I have been pretty good about it lately. Yeah, I guess I have a bit of a problem, and it's been getting out of hand lately, but... I'm a policeman. I need to talk to you about police things. I don't know anything about alcohol use. Oh, hell no! Run away! <laughs> But, okay, so my options are agree with him, inviting him to continue on the path that he was already speaking, pretend that I don't know anything about any of it, or flee. I just want to question him. Kim doesn't want me to question him. Running away would work for that, but I, I want to question him. This is just denial, obviously, clearly. Neither of these is going to be helpful. Is running away the right option? It's a boring option, certainly. I don't usually shy away from speaking about my alcoholism, though. <laughs> Much to Kim's chagrin. But Kim's not going to be happy with me with anything aside from running away from this man, I would assume. So... Uh, I do have a problem. Is that crude away? I see deep inside you. Your body and your spirit are suffering greatly from overindulgement. And you don't even know it. 
are they now? Great, more patronizing, so original. Oh, I'm very in touch with my suffering. How do you know what I'm feeling? I'm actually here on behalf of some young people looking to establish a nightclub. <laughs> I mean, that is true. <laughs> oh, boy, where do we want to go with this? I am very in touch with my suffering, I feel like. It pretty much leads my life lately. I'm going to start here. Not all of it. I was like you once. You don't know all the havoc El Vino is wrecking on your mind and your spirit. Necesita parar, homie. What does that mean? Y you need parar. Parar. What's parar? What? What is that? Hang on. What does that mean? It might just tell me if I say continue, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out what that means. Pardon me. Parar. Parar. What is that? Stall. You need to stop. You need to stop, is what he's saying. I have, though. Continue. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what the ceiling climber is saying. <laughs> Thank you for that feedback, Kim. For some reason, I feel like you have a point there. Who do you think you are? Some crazy guy under the roof? What is this shit? You know, alcohol is central, central to my identity. If I wouldn't drink, I wouldn't... I just wouldn't be me. This is stupid. I don't even know what this is. That's all well and good, but we need to talk about the unlicensed occupation of ecclesiastic property. Changing the subject. I am trying to quit. I am genuinely trying to quit. <sighs> Don't trust me. Trust the mother. I'm only the messenger, Holmes. His voice echoes in the cold air of the church. Thought gained wasteland of reality. Didn't I have another thought I needed to check out and I just didn't? Right. Mike. I'm sorry, Mike. I forgot. Continue. This is the Church of the Mother of Silence. You are welcome here. He sways gently on the beams, waiting for you to take it all in. Well, I probably should have had this conversation before I checked everything out and looted everything, huh? Continue. You have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> is he just trying to throw you off your game? The Mother of Silence, he says. I presume that's why they set up the silence zone in the center of the church. I also assume that... The fact that I'm able to have this conversation with him from down here is because I'm no longer standing in the center over there. But, well, continue. Whatever it is, he's quite confident about it. Just look how gracefully he sways. Kim thinks he's on narcotics. That could also give him some confidence, but I don't know anything about it. Continue. Tis not an act to my liege. Save him perchance, he hath deceived his very self. This man is a zealot. No doubt about that. I'm going to ask you again. Are you the crab man? Some ravers want to turn this place into a nightclub. Do you know where the other spooker is? Point at the strange machines around you. Okay, then thanks. <laughs> Let's stick to the crab man for now. Never known myself to be a crab. But if that's the name you got for me, I won't stop you from using it. To be fair, it's really more like a spider. If you're not a crab, then what are you? Sorry, you just weren't moving like a human. Hey, it's your neighbors who came up with this name, not me. I mean, all of this seems relevant. This is one of those situations where I kind of want to do all of these, but also it's not going to let me, I'm pretty sure. So we can change him to the Spider-Man, which is not a terrible idea. He's definitely more spiderish than crabish, but it was the kids outside who came up with that. He's not really moving like a human, I guess. You can have, we can invite him to change it himself. Do we lay a label on him, or do we let him identify it himself? I mean, I am, I am tempted to go with the spider option, but... Now, let's see what he has to say. What, if you're not a crab, then what are you? I always thought of myself more like a flame, flickering along the rafters and beams. It may be that I gotta work on my technique. He considers this for a moment and pauses in the middle there. What were you before you became a crab man? I was in a gang way. But my memories of that time are fading. Most of them are already gone. Shake your head. So many people losing their memory. A certain portent of doom. I lost my memory too, and it haunts me. I lost my memory too, but I like it. It's like I get to create a whole new me, start again from scratch. So you used to be in a gang, but you don't really remember it? Sounds convenient. <laughs> the skeptic option. <sighs> How do I feel about losing my memory? On the one hand, it's deeply inconvenient when I'm trying to solve a crime, but on the other hand, I mean... 
it has allowed me to just casually ignore all the presumable chemical addictions I had going on. And it seems like I was in a really bad way before the memory loss. Hmm. I don't know. It's escapism, clearly. Creating a whole new me. But, like... Somehow, the memory loss has snapped me out of whatever spiral I was in. Although, admittedly, I'm still in kind of a spiral. And so is everything else. That's kind of what's going on in this game. But, like... Huh. Hmm. It does haunt me. But I am trying to make the best of it. <laughs> Just casually ignoring the Apocalypse Cop option, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> I still haven't even internalized that thought. <sighs> I'm going with this one. That's not really the point, I say. He frowns. You gotta give yourself over to service. Service of the mother, that is. Right, right, right. Prosthe proselytizing. Gotcha. Continue. Do you remember your name, sir? That's a fair question. Continue. Diago's my name. But those syllables don't mean much to me these days. A name isn't just your identity, but also, so to speak. Continue. Your place amongst your fellows. Your place in the world. I ain't got no use for such a place anymore. Uh-huh. My name's Harry. Extend your hand for a greeting. Reading the room. <laughs> my name's Harrier Dubois, and my place in the world is Lieutenant W. Freeder. I don't do names either. Names are out. I don't care what mine is. This... <laughs> He's at least 20 feet up. But it is magnificently obtuse. I'm kind of curious what he'll do. That's just the thing, Holmes. None of that matters. He ignores your hand. His limbs are mere shadow below the ceiling. Well, fine. You be that way, crab man. Um, so what are you doing here? This is a special place. There's a perforation in the world up there. There is. A way out into nothingness. He nods toward the church. This church was built around it for purposes of veneration. Specifically, he nods towards the ceiling. I can read words. There's a, there's a perforation above the church. Am I hearing you right? Continue. I circled this. Nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, I'd be pure enough to go drink from it directly. Aha! Okay. So the silence of this place changed your mind, essentially, and now you're trying to make it into the Terran reality above the church that apparently is there. Is there actually... Is there actually... a nexus of the Pale above this church? I'm still wondering if there's some possibility that the pale was involved in my memory problems, but it doesn't seem likely at this point. But if there is a nexus of the pale above the church, I guess it's not impossible. Who is this mother of silence you keep talking about? What will happen once you drink from this perforation? I still don't understand what, what you're doing in the church. Are these yours? Show them the scarf and the shoes you found lying around. Right, I had your questions. Um, so who's the mother of silence? Oh, that's no simple question, I say. She is one who can be painted. Old sculpted. Is the sculpture in the pillar by the door yours then? Continue. She is a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me. But I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes. And no one ever will. And you're certain you didn't make this up, right? What will happen once you drink from the perforation? That's a great question. I will be incinerated, but not destroyed. Finally, I won with the state of the world before reality began. Okay, continue. That sounds a bit like substitution behavior, no? You know a thing or two about that. I suppose that I do. Are you sure you didn't just switch one drug for another? It's not like that at all, man. It's just faith and joyful service. Uh-huh, continue. Too gleeful, those words. He is lying. Not to you to his very own self. Faith is a kind of drug. I guess you have a point. 
Let's agree to disagree. I was being insensitive. Sorry, let's move on. So everything but claiming that faith is a drug is a proceed option. I mean, it can be, depending on your relationship with it. It seems like it might be to this man. But I don't think he's going to take kindly to this particular suggestion. That said, I am curious to see what he'd say, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. I heard that before, Way. And I know I can't convince you on the spot. But think, when's the last time you woke up from silent communion with a hangover, regretting what you did last night? He shakes his head. Hmm. I mean, Sunday, I think. Was it? Was it? Was, it was Monday. Pardon me. Monday. Uh, but I can't say that I was regretting what I did last night because I don't know what I did. The, well, no, at this point, I do know what I did the previous night. It took me a while to regret it because I didn't know what I did. Anyway, continue. There are drugs darker than alcohol circle in your system that's true i think love might have been my drug of choice and i think i'm still hung over from it that's a salient point she took you for a good spin huh he looks at you don't gravely. worry bro that love is but a drop compared to the ocean of the mother's love uh-huh continue the mother will eat all of you and never spit you out <sighs> So we've conversed about it some more. But now I have to decide whether or not I agree with him on it being different from what I said. Or I can just apologize because I'm sorry, cop. Let's do that one. No worries, man. I know this shit takes time. So I still don't understand what you're doing here. I'm a seraph, Holmes. I sing the mother's glory. Seraph? Like, like, a, like, a, like an angel? You should sing for me, the superstar cop. Point your thumbs at yourself. It doesn't really make sense for you to sing if she's the mother of silence. Nod. Singing is good. I'm a bit of a singer myself. At the moment, I am the superstar cop. Because that's still in my brain. Giving me the capacity to boost several stats that I probably am never going to boost. Um, Do we want to embrace it? I kind of don't. <laughs> I feel like I should take it just because it's here because I have that thought in my brain, but... Let's see if he does. He probably won't, but let's see if he does. I am from No Marietti, if that's what you're thinking. And the song I sing is Silent as the Mother. I guess that tracks. Continue. Marietti is a mesque style of music and dance, commonly seen at all manner of festivities especially weddings. It's delightfully quaint owing to its peasant origins. Fair enough. Thank you, Encyclopedia. Continue. He lost his cool there for a moment. Seems you hit some nerve. I guess so. He didn't seem that shaken, but I guess my composure noticed what I did not. Huh. So how did you even find this place, this church? Hard to say. I think I did some construction work here, back when I still had material worries. Up there? I realized what the true purpose of the church was. How did you get up there in the first place? Did you climb the rafters in the, in the beginning? Continue. Been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me now, way. Eh? It didn't belong to me. I see. Well, am I wearing your shoes? I think they were. A long time ago. I had to shed them like skins to get closer to the center of the silence. You could have them. I don't need them anymore. He looks at the red clothing items in your hand and on your feet. Continue. They look pretty dapper, actually. <laughs> they kind of do. Anyway, I had other questions. The sinewy figure lingers on the wooden beams, blending into the shadows. Number one keeps switching out for new information. You've been here a long time. Do you know why the church was abandoned? Police raid a while back. He responds, his voice suddenly flat. Continue. Did you witness it? Yeah. Not really. Or at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. That's what's so great about the mother. It lets you forget about everything. Uh-huh. So, I guess I may as well come around to the business that um, actually brought me here. Some ravers want to turn this place into a nightclub. The ones in the ten outside? Right? I see them. Guessing they're the ones who call me a crab probably scared of me 
Wait, do they have reason to be scared? So what do you think about the nightclub, that is? I trust you won't get in the way of some enterprising youth. Their business looks promising. Turching a, turning a church into a nightclub. I have to say it's a great idea. You should support it. Interestingly, all the options here are relatively positive, but let's go ahead and ask if they have a reason to be scared. Nah, man. They look pretty funny. And I don't harm no one anymore. Anyway. So what do you think about the nightclub, that is? Let's just go with the neutral option on this one, please. Why not? They wouldn't bother me none. I'm usually way up there, imbibing. Ain't no music on earth that can reach where I go. Fair, I guess. Huh. Well, you have the support of the local. Continue. Might even be nice to have some company. As long as they can, you know, get used to your presence, I guess. And vice versa. Continue. He said that in spite of himself. He's more attached to the human than he'd like to think. Yeah, it seems like it. I am curious about where the other person around here is. Kind of impolite to call them a spooker. <laughs> but sure, let's ask about the other person. Other spooker? Oh, esa viejita es muy estudiosa. <laughs> Don't know, Holmes. What does that mean? Hang on. What does that mean? Hey, hang on. It may Wait, maybe the continue is going to tell me. Continue? He laughs, by the way. Viejita is... Grandma? Grandma? <sighs> Muy estudiosa. Like the studious grandma? Is that what he said? Wait, so there is another person living in the church, and it's a vieta? Viejita, I'm rather? I can... He just said it out loud. Right, thanks. Let's see if I can find her some other way. Um, Go ahead and do the wait option, please. No. I just call her viejita because of her clothes. She's actually quite young. He scratches or his head. Or maybe not. That young. Age is just one of the many masks we wear. And you don't know where she is? That's what I said, Holmes. I mean, I guess that is what you said. How can you not know that when you both live here? Could it be because you climb up into the roof of the church and commune with the silence not in the sky? Because I feel like that's probably it. But let's go ahead and ask anyway. Don't really follow her comings and goings. Just see her typing on her computer now and then. We got different interests. So, you got nothing else to tell me? How she looks, what she does, who is she? I suspect Tiago doesn't care, but anyway, carry on. I'm afraid not, Esse. You just have to wait until she comes back, or... He shrugs. Okay, continue. Or search through her radio computer. I mean, that is an option. Okay, then, thanks. Nice conversation. I have some thoughts to think about. Let's think about thoughts. What do we got? The Litany of Contact Mike. Temporary research bonuses. Minus one logic. No pain, no gain. Minus one conceptualization. Push it. Minus one drama. Make it. Research time. 15 minutes. <laughs> it's time once again to, to return to the 20 things you like to say about Contact Mike, the boxer who is, apparently, a paragon of open competition. It really doesn't get any better than this. Any better. Both inside and outside the ring. Stop. Point at someone. Someone in the distance. Point your finger at him. He will point his finger back at you, vaulting an impassable gulf of finance and privilege to... Uh-huh. <laughs> Fifteen minutes. That's so fast. I really want it. I really want... I want it. But I need to sort out my thoughts if I'm going to do that. So let's at least just look at Wasteland of Reality. Minus two physical in physical instrument. Insomnia takes 20 hours. Unlike that other thing that I thought would take 20 hours, the homosexual underground one. It has been brought to your attention that you're an alcoholic and that it's a sickness and it's killing you. You're crawling on your knees through life, your booze-filled belly dragging on the ground, your brain now fuzzy, now in overdrive, your hair sticking together with today's cold sweat and yesterday's vomit. Perhaps they're right. Anything is better than this, even bone-dry reality itself. Maybe you can quit? That seems important. Twenty hours. Twenty hours. Okay, well, clearly I'm going to have to make some decisions in terms of, like, what thoughts I want to keep and what thoughts I want to throw out. I'm having trouble with that lately. You, you know this. I know this. We all know this. But we have to stop for just now. I do want to look at the radio computer. I'll probably do that first thing next time, but we have to stop for just now because this episode has been long enough. So, thank you for watching. And next time, well, 
if possible, I'll see if I can go through my thought cabinet and make some decisions there, but it may just have to wait a little bit longer. I don't know. In any case, thanks again for watching. Sorry, Kim, didn't mean to shine a flashlight in your eyes. And I'll see you next time.